Southern Colonies, Part 2. All right, so we're going to start with Maryland. Maryland was a proprietary colony, and what that means is that it was owned by a single person. Uh, that person was Lord Baltimore in England, and this is different from Virginia, where in Virginia you have a basically a corporation, the London Company of Virginia set up to kind of reap the benefits of investing and hopefully getting their money back. In terms of Lord Baltimore, he is just a basically a friend of the king. Uh, the king owes him money. And so uh, to pay him off, he gives them all this land in Maryland and says, hey, do what you want with it. It is yours. Maryland is set up uh, fairly similar or fairly close, I mean, to Jamestown in that it's on the gigantic Chesapeake Bay. And whereas Virginia is set up kind of on the southern part of the Chesapeake Bay, you can see that Maryland will eventually take up that northern part. Maryland is set up as a haven for Catholics. You have to remember that during this time, you are talking about a time in England when there is um, kind of this back and forth between Catholics and Protestants. And at this time in Maryland, um, you know, you have uh, a government and uh, a country who is kind of leaning Protestant and the, the Catholics at this time are persecuted. And so Lord Baltimore, he sets up Maryland as a haven for his Catholic friends, a place where they can go and start a new life and start, you know, gigantic farms and, uh, you know, just just get away from persecution in England. The problem is, is that these large farms are going to end up being worked by people that are overwhelmingly Protestant. And inevitably, the Catholic owners and the Protestant workers, they are going to clash. And so what this leads to is the first kind of religious toleration act that we see anywhere uh, in what will eventually be the United States. And that's the Toleration Act in the 1640s. And the Toleration Act says that anybody that's Christian, and this doesn't include other religions like Jewish people or Muslims at this point or anything like that. But if you are, if you are Christian, Catholic or Protestant, you have the right in Maryland to, to practice your religion how you choose. From the outset, Maryland is going to be set up economically, at least the same way that Virginia is going to end up. And that is uh, by, by growing tobacco. Um, you know, the, there's really not, not any mineral wealth to extract in Maryland. And so pretty quickly tobacco takes over as the main cash crop and the main export and the main way that these large scale plantation owners are able to make money. Now, at least initially, the work is done by uh, mostly people that are like indentured servants. And we'll talk about what that is in just a little bit um, if we haven't already. But these indentured servants, they're, you know, they're, they're going to work there for four to seven years and then they're going to get their own land and they're going to leave. Um, at least up until the 1670s, that's true. And then after that, uh, and after Bacon's Rebellion in Virginia, then Maryland will start importing a, a large number of slaves to do the work. All right. The next um, of the southern colonies that we want to talk about are the Carolinas. And we kind of call it the Carolinas because at this time, really, there's only one Carolina. And um, what we typically think of as North and South Carolina really is just Carolina at this point. Carolina is... is, is um, not only a proprietary colony, but we kind of refer to it as a restoration colony. And so when Charles II um, comes to the throne, the, the, the English monarchy, the English Civil War has run its course, Oliver Cromwell has come and gone, and now you have um, England reinstituting its, its monarchy, and Charles II comes into um, rule in the 1660s, and he is interested in overseas, establishing overseas colonies again. And so not only the Carolinas, but then you'll get like New York, um, you'll get uh, Pennsylvania, uh, New Jersey, Delaware. Uh, and, and those are kind of collectively called the restoration 
colonies because they were they were created during the restoration of the monarchy of England. The Carolinas from the outset, and we're mostly talking about what you guys would think of today as South Carolina. Uh, South Carolina had, of the two, had better farmland, better uh, watering areas, uh, better climate to, to grow crops. And really, those crops would be foodstuffs. So anything from meat or dried fish, um, grain, um, you know, so, just something so that they could trade with the Caribbean. Now, what you also have to remember is that in the Caribbean right now, at this time, they are growing sugarcane on sugarcane plantations. And, and many of the English plantation owners that actually lived in bar places like Barbados or Antigua or, uh, you know, eventually Jamaica and places like that, some of them start to come up to South Carolina and start replicating the same thing that they were doing in, in those Caribbean islands. And now they live in the Carolinas, but there becomes a, a, a mutual trade between them. And not only with them, but just with the, the colonies in general, where the, you're sending food and, and timber and other things that the Caribbean needs. And then the Caribbean is going to send up to the colonies, things like molasses and, and you know, rum uh, production will, will start to, to start to happen. And, and uh, so they will kind of need each other. But really, the, the food stuff we need to be most concerned with in the Carolinas is rice. And uh, eventually that's going to lead to the importation of slaves because slaves knew how to grow rice from West Africa. They had built up uh, you know, a, a certain amount of immunity from malaria, from the mosquitoes. And, uh, you know, you add those two things together and they become eventually a, a major labor force in the Carolinas. Now, the Carolinas are two very different parts where they start to develop that way. And South Carolina starts to create a very kind of civilized uh, society in terms of the planter elite. And then you'll have, uh, you know, small farmers, small landowning farmers and then um, kind of landless farmers. And then, you know, eventually towards the bottom, you're going to get indentured servants and then slaves. Uh, but South Carolina, you, you get this not caste system, but you, you definitely get this social hierarchy uh, that forms in what would eventually become South Carolina. Now, North Carolina, their climate is not really good for plantation growing stuff. And so, you know, the, the soil is not as good. Um, the, the ports are not as good. Albemarle Sound is very rocky and uh, windswept. And so, you know, they, they are not going to develop as easily as we're going to see in South Carolina. Furthermore, uh, the, most of these people are just squatters. They are people that were not able to legally obtain land in Virginia or, you know, down south in Carolina. And so they, they migrated up north from South Carolina or what would become South Carolina or uh, migrate south from, from Virginia. And um, these people were a little more rugged. They were uh, probably a little less sophisticated, a little less educated, kind of a rougher sort compared to the, like the planner elite that develops in South Carolina, as you can see from the map. Okay, eventually slaves are gonna be brought up to the Carolinas, as I said, to grow rice. And one of the things that the people that moved up from Barbados did was replicate how they treated slaves uh, very much in terms of what we would call uh, chattel slavery. And that means that if you are a human being, you can be owned as property. You are basically capital to that person. And, and you as a slave under the Barbados Slave Code, you would have zero rights. Um, the owner can do what they want with you, kind of like what they could do to like a tool that they owned. Um, and, uh, you know, this led to some very inhumane, cruel, and uh, pretty terrible treatment for slaves. And this would be replicated throughout the rest of the, the South, is that as slavery expanded to Mississippi and Louisiana, they would take that idea of the Barbados Slave Code with them. Okay, what you're looking at here is what I talked at least briefly about in terms of the Atlantic trade. And so you can see what kind of is commonly called the triangle trade. And it doesn't make a perfect triangle. And there's kind of trade going all over the place. But basically what you have is the development of an Atlantic economy. And so you can see that uh, the American or the British North American colonies uh, 
we're responsible for a lot of natural resources, you know, you know timber for uh, meat, whale oil, um, tobacco, you know, later it would be cotton, but for right now, um, you know, you can see the things that are going towards Europe or towards England in particular. Then um, coming back from England would be manufactured goods because the, the colonies, they did not make a lot of manufactured goods for themselves. And furthermore, they were eventually prevented from making those things. So they would have to get a lot of those things from Great Britain or from, from England. Now the West Indies, they were involved in, uh, you know, sugar plant, sugar plantation, so sugar production. And so you would see slaves going over there. Um, you know, you'd see food coming from the colonies down there, flour, fish, meat. And then eventually that sugar would be, you know, taken to North America and to Europe. And eventually, uh, you would either use as table sugar in your tea or, you know, sugar to sweeten up breads or something like that. Or um, you could even make it in, you could distill in the molasses and then make it into rum. And that was big money. Okay, last, Georgia. So Georgia was founded as a proprietary colony as well. And that, that proprietary group was headed by a guy named James Oglethorpe. James Oglethorpe was a gentleman in England and um, he had a friend, a good friend that had gotten into debt and thrown into prison and he didn't think that was fair. And so he, in his mind, he wanted to make Georgia as kind of a second chance opportunity. And so these people that were thrown in jail in England, they could get out of jail and uh, under the watch of uh, Oglethorpe, they would start a new life. They would start a, a, you know, a new farm and it would be centered around the city of Savannah. Now, as for England, um, they kind of had other plans for Georgia. They saw that South Carolina in terms of raw materials, in terms of rice production, um, you know, distilling of, of sugar and, and so forth, that South Carolina was very valuable to protect. And so they saw it as necessary to have uh, Georgia there as sort of like a buffer between them and the Spanish. And, um, and so they didn't see it as much, you know, as much for the, the social stuff as they did economically. Okay. Um, Georgia is the last of the colonies. I mean, they come uh, way after the restoration colonies. So like when Carolina gets uh, created in the 1660s, I mean, you're talking another uh, 70 years before Oglethorpe's Georgia. And Georgia is really kind of out in the middle of nowhere at this point. They're very far south. And to be honest, they don't play a particularly important role in, um, you know, the Revolutionary War or anything like that. And they, they end up deferring to South Carolina quite a bit because South Carolina is a little more developed than they are. Georgia was not a particularly great place to be able to farm. As you can see from the picture as they, the, as they tried to build Savannah, um, it's, you know, densely forested. The soil was not particularly good and uh, they really struggled. They tried to grow things like grapes and, uh, you know, they tried to raise silkworms and it just, it never really worked out. And so Georgia really never profited economically. Eventually they would start growing uh, some tobacco and eventually some cotton, but that was, that was much later than the other colonies. All right. So that is it for the development of the Southern colonies, part two.